Our next concept is Uji. Uji. So why we are using this? Observe this one. So Uji, has, Uji seems like what? A server. Basically what? It's a server. So why we need this? Sometimes as this Hadoop is what? Highly recommended for working with huge data sets. Sometimes one job may not be efficient for doing all your task. So that time better we can go for what? More number of jobs. So get output from one job, pass that output from that job to another job as what input and process that job again get that output get some output from that job and pass that output to some other job as what input and finally that job will give you final output getting so if suppose if I'm taking job A job B job C okay one data set is there now I'm just trying to process on this data set with this job now it is giving some output I'll take this output as what? Input for this second job. Again, I'll, I'll process on this and again I'll give some output and that output will be passed to this job C as what? Input. Now finally this will give proper output. This will give proper output. Got it? So job A is going to be applied on what? Some data set it will give some output. I'll pass that output to some job B as input and I'll get some output from job B. I'll pass that output to job C as what input and finally that job C will be giving you final output. So how does it seems like? Do we need to have some coordination in between each and every job or not? There should be some coordination between each and every job. So who is going to take care of that coordination in between these jobs? It will be taken care by Uji. Uji will take care of how to coordinate one job another job processing one job and getting output from that job and passing that output to another job as what input and getting that output from another job and passing that one to some other job as input so this all these things will be taken care by Uji okay so that's what we are saying this one as what workflow engine it is workflow engine it is workflow engine it is okay so this UG is called as what workflow engine so it will take care of how to coordinate different different jobs together and how to give final output here so basically here you will be having two nodes one is control node one is control node Second one is action node. One is control node. Another one is what? Action node. One is control node. Another one is what? Action node. So what this control node will do? And what this action node will do? <coughs> control node will take care of from where the job processing should be started. Means what? From where that job should be started. Action node will take care of how to execute one job at a time if suppose if I wanted to if suppose if I wanted to configure three jobs if I wanted to coordinate three jobs at a time so how many number of action nodes you need to have three one job one action tag should be there action node in the sense action tag control node in the sense control tag okay control node in the sense control tag action node in the sense action tag so basically for your whole job for your whole job which is going to be run by this OG will be having what one control node only but it will be having but it is having any number of action nodes that depends on number of jobs you are maintaining if suppose it is running with three jobs then you have to take what three action tags if it is running with five jobs it is it should take care of what five action tags but there should be only one action one control tag there should be only one control node or control tag getting what i'm telling you so this is it Sir, how, the, how does it seems like? What is this control node and what is this action node exactly? How does it seems like? So, as we are saying that, this is actually what workflow engine. There we must have one dot .xml file in this UG, if you wanted to run this UG. We need to have what? One dot .xml file. What is a dot .xml file? Workflow dot .xml file it is. Workflow dot .xml file it is. Workflow dot .xml file it is. Got it? 
so we have to work with this dot xml file this workflow dot xml file will have all your configurations about all your jobs okay so basically it is generally in your advanced job you might have seen web dot xml file have you seen that web dot xml file dot xml file web dot xml file is there so if there is no web dot xml file there is no solids basically you might have studied that so basically your control will be sent for that web dot xml file only it seems like a container so there it is just picking up that exactly matched class solid class and it is reaching that and it is getting that exactly matched service method either do get method or do post method so how it is going to be taking care over there about the web dot xml file here also this workflow dot xml file will take care of your job so initially when you are going to run this uji immediately it is sending that request what workflow dot xml file in this workflow dot xml file this will be started with some root tag as what workflow hyphen app okay workflow hyphen app is here and it is finally ending with what one more workflow workflow hyphen app with forward slash there should be forward slash for the ending tag okay it is almost that it is ending over there itself now it is taking care of what action tag action and it will complete this action for job a next job b is also there right now it is taking action for job b next one more is what action job c and it is ending what action here so how many tags are there one two three tags will be there because you are running with what three jobs sir what is this one are we going to give only job a job b job c here no you have to give configurations about those jobs you have to pass configurations about what those jobs what mapper class you wanted to take what reducer class you wanted to take what is that mapper output key type what is that mapper output value type what is that again here also what is that mapper class what is that reducer class what input key you wanted to i mean what input file you wanted to work what output directory you wanted to get everything should be configured in these action tags in these action tags how many jobs are going to be done in this uji those many number of action tags should be there so this is all fine then how to start this uji service how to start this uji service you know how your name node is working in your hadoop here also uji is running with one service that is actually what bootstrap 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 service it is just remember that somebody may be asking you that what service we must have for running our uji what is that bootstrap b o o t s okay s t r a p got it bootstrap service so this is that so sir how to start this service now okay generally you know very well that how many services are running means how can we check by giving sudo jps sudo jps will give you that how many number of services it is running with so remember that right okay next so how to run this how to start this service sir nothing is there very very easy you can happily give what sudo space slash etc slash init dot d slash init dot d slash okay uji start slash uji start slash uji space start slash init dot d sorry slash etc slash init dot d slash uji space start that's it it will start that bootstrap service so here what we are giving we are giving input directory here and we are giving output directory here okay so the out, this output directory will be input directory for this job b and it is giving some output directory again and this output directory will be passed to some input directory for this job c and it is finally giving some output directory okay so this is about what the overall idea about uji okay that's it and remaining things we will see in 
next class i mean practically we will see that in next class